Hi friends, afternoon, hope you're doing really well. Check this out, been decorating. Mm -mm. It's only been sitting in the cupboard a year, this wallpaper. Finally, we put it up, it looks amazing. I'm so happy with it. Right, anyway, hope everyone's doing really well. Hope you're all staying really safe. Um, what have you been up to this week? It's been very busy, isn't it? Already, it's Monday and I just, well, this is it. I keep forgetting what day it is. Hi, Diane, hope you're doing really well. I'll give you a little wave. Boop, boop. There we go. Um, yeah, I keep forgetting what day of the week it is. It's really, really funny. Um, the weather has been beautiful, so I've been out in the garden, which is lovely. Um, the children are becoming a little bit restless now. Hi, Linda, hope you're doing well. Um, but, you know, we're carrying on school. We've done us a great plan, so it's quite easy. And I'm, oh, my poor Lottie missing out on her prom this year. I said to her yesterday, what do you want to do? Do you want to still buy your dress? Because we paid for half of it. Hiya, Julie. Hope you're doing really well. Um, anyway, yeah, so I don't know what we're going to do about a prom dress. She said to me, if, I do, if we do get it still, what, when am I going to wear it? Oh, I don't know. In the garden? <laughs> I don't know. But then we could organise a prom, couldn't we, later on for her, maybe. Hi, Denise. I hope you're doing really well. So today I'm going to do two different techniques for you. Um, the first technique I'm going to do is triple layer stamping, which basically means I've cut all my mat and layers all ready to go. Then what we're going to do is I've layered them up, but I've stuck them with, um, hi, Jane, with low adhesive tape together. So then we're going to stamp over the whole lot of all all the different layers. Hi Becky, I hope you're doing really well. Oh, my beautiful squirrel, my niece. Her name's not Squirrel, her name's actually Billy, but I call her Squirrel because she's the nuts. Um, and I love her completely. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start moving on. I'm gonna turn you around in a minute so you can see what my hands are doing. I'm using the most beautiful stamp. This is a Stamps By Me stamp. You probably can't see much of the detail. Let me grab a bit of paper. Oh, come on, Carly, you do cause problems for yourself there we go and this is just like a flower burst stamp absolutely beautiful so I'm gonna layer that up we're gonna um, white emboss it and then I'm gonna show you some coloring with um, some gossip markers so let's get ahead already and then the second project that I'm gonna do today is a little bit of work on my art journal now I started one before that was been and done but I'm gonna start a new one so I thought maybe if you've got a journal at home or maybe just like a little notebook that you want to start building up with your pages and we could do a page a week so don't feel stressed about it we can work you know together oh thank you Denise love the inspiration yay it's so exciting isn't it it's so weird to not be on telly as well I mean it's been a month now it's really odd isn't it but um obviously i'm still designing i'm still doing loads of different work as well so just from home because it's much safer in the current sort of problems that we're having so let me show you where i'm up to let me turn you around now right you ready so you can see exactly what is going on right now i do have a bit of a pickle trying to get this in the right position so hopefully you are there so what I've done, first layer, um, this is just um, a die that I've used to cut this with that beautiful stitch edge. Two of them together, fold it over, double layers. Then what I've done is I've done mats and layers. Now don't worry if they're not exactly the same whites. It really doesn't matter because we're colouring everything as well. So I'm using my Eureka just purely because it's a fabulous. Let me just hold you up a bit more. There we go. Absolutely fabulous stamping platform. So I've got all these multiple layers and you can see I've got a little tad of low tack tapes just between the layers because once I've stamped, I'm actually going to raise it up on foam. So I'm taking that really beautiful large floral stamp and I'm going to stamp over all of the layers all at once. So I'm just going to pick this up onto my Eureka. Pop it over and I'm using embossing ink pad by Lettery, but it's it's up to you. You use whatever one you prefer. So I'm just going over the top, making sure you really, really get lots and lots of ink on there because you don't want it patchy. Sorry if I'm wobbling, but I've got an overhead camera. So what happens is attached to the table, so it does go a bit wobbly. So I'm just going to make sure all of that has had a good ink in. 
right now once that's done i'm going to come back to this position and i'm just going to push down really really simple and i'm going to go for some white scented embossing powder now the one that i am using is one of my own products from many moons ago this was a creator product and this is baby powder so the actual scent i don't know if they're available still out there i do know debbie moore did some before they were lovely so i'm just giving it a good fingertip dance all the way over then i'm going to come up let's have a look hopefully we are done so straight into my tray little bit of embossing powder over the top and it smells lush and you can see how it's stamped over all of the different layers so let's add a little bit of heat Oh, it smells delicious. I wish we had smell of vision. I wonder how you could make scented embossing powders. Mm. May have to have a little think about this, or may have to think about maybe bringing a product like this to the Amala range. Mm. I shall have a little think about that. So I'm just allowing the heat to emboss it. Now, with embossing, I've had a few uh, messages about heat embossing. Basically, when it starts going grainy like this, you have to apply more heat. Try for more of a, um, if you're learning, first of all, to do heat embossing, I suggest that you go for quite a liney drawing rather than a full sort of coverage picture because what happens, is um, if it's too sort of uh, detailed, you lose the detail when you emboss it. So here we go, we're nearly done. So it needs to be smooth, not grainy. she says there we go so now i'm going to take these layers apart again and obviously i have got that little bit of detail just in there the card that i'm going to be creating today is going to be quite sort of pink toned so i'm going to go with that as well as detail so first of all i'm just going to grab some of my ink pads here i've got worn lipstick and uh some sponge sugar and the tattered rose <clears throat> so i'm going to go straight onto my mat don't worry about being too perfect just sort of get some color on and mix it up a bit then i'm just going to give that a little spritz of water i say this and i can't even find oh look it's right in front of you carly i'm so organized today I'm just giving that a little bit of a spritz just to activate, <coughs> excuse me, that colour. There we go. And then I'm simply going to tap this straight in. Let's have a look. Yeah, I like that. So now I'm going to dry that off in between. If you haven't got a dryer, 
You could use a hairdryer, but you can't use a hairdryer for heat embossing. So I prefer as well to do swirls when I'm doing colour. The reason why is because it just gives you more of um, a deeper sort of colour range technique when it's drying. You tend to get better pools of colour. So now remember really what we need to do is not worry about too much in the centre. We need to add more on the outside. So you can go back in, dip, dip. Dry the layers in between. Like this, so I'll just pop that to the side. Let's pop that off. Okay, so my next layer, now this base layer, this top layer, that's the one I'm mainly gonna decorate. I'm gonna color that with pens. But now what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more ink here and there to these, uh, was it sponge sugar or was it? I think it was that one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was that one. There we go. Again, a little bit more of a drop of water just to activate that doesn't have to be perfect um, and then I'm just going to pick up my fan brush tap over my project and then I'm going in again there we go see when you tap with the water it just gives you a completely different effect So I'm going to do some more ink work on them layers as well, so don't think I'm just leaving it like that. I'm just going to pick this up, give it a good old squidge. Just dry that off. Can you see? Yeah. I'm just going to move this out of the way and go onto here. Hopefully, this is cleaner. Yeah. So now I'm going to pick up that tattered uh, rose distress oxide. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous colour. So I'm just going to find a corresponding blender. There we go. So now I'm going to pick that up. Now, what I'm going to do as well is on my mat, I'm just going to add a little bit of the worn lipstick. Because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around these edges. Sorry about the noise. See, and then this is where all the white really picks up. So once I've done that, I'm just going to grab my other um, layer. And I'm going to pick up one little swipe of that. And then I'm just going to do a tiny tad of an edge. And you see I'm barely touching the paper just giving it a little bit of definition okay so I'm going to do exactly the same with the others now so I'm going to come back pick up that tatty rose not my table so wobbly it's funny what you get used to at home isn't it then again, I don't usually have a camera sitting above the top of me. I've been quite lucky lately because I've been making some beautiful samples for Tattered Lace, which has been lush. Really, really enjoyed been doing that. So again, just around that edge. And then once we've done that, and see how that faux stitching picks up on there as well. just enough and then I'm going to pick up that excess bit and I'm literally just
just sort of stroking the edges really with it I'm really not doing too much you don't need to put too much on to get that beautiful blend it's more about separating the layers with a frame so I'm going back here can you see where I am there we go gorgeous this is a great technique and you can do this not just with florals you could do this with um, alphabets you could do this with many many different layers so here we are so far let's check yep 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 right so no nope. yep right so they're my layers I'm going to pop them to a side now because what I'm going to do is start coloring some of this detail so I'm going to pick up my gossip markers I've got three here I've also got a little scrap piece of card just to check my colors so that one's very very bright so that one can go there mid perfect that one can go there super light that one there and then what color is this this is mid so that should be in there right okay so I'm going to get my brightest color and I'm just going to start pulling that out from the petals. Okay, so you are just taking that centre of the flower and you are just pulling it out. Okay, so that was our brightest. So now we're going for our mid-tone. Just check, yep, yeah, mid-tone. So I'm just going to go over that as well. Okay. So I want my mid. Yep. I'm just going to exaggerate that colour out. I'm just putting in some detail with that colour. Beautiful. Okay. So now my lightest colour of all. Now, if you've got really good alcohol marker pens, like, for instance, Gossip, Ink Lily, they do all the hard work for you, so you really don't have to. You can do the tri-blend, which is basically three different tones, your darkish, your mid, your light, or you can start blending on your own projects, on your own colours, for instance. So, again, I'm just going over... in that colour out. See how you can just go over with your lighter to just pull it into the next layer of colour. I know Michelle Bell has been doing some brilliant um, videos recently on the crafty army so maybe go and have a look at that so now i'm going back in to my tattered rose and i'm just gonna just do soften the edges slightly then change over to the worn lipstick again And then just frame it with that deeper colour, just slightly. This reminds me of like sorbet. Mmm, oh, I'd love some sorbet now. Wouldn't that be lovely? Okay, so then we're just going to go round. So, where are we now? Let's start layering up this project. Okay. So now I need some foam tape, she says. I know I put some in here. Here we go. 
and I am simply going to layer up the edges. Now, even though I have different stamps, I can still put it on a tilt if I want. It doesn't have to be straight, but if you do want it straight, not a problem. So I'm just going to put some foam pads on here. So it can sit perfect or it can sit screw with completely up to you. So you've just got to find the detail of where you put the previous um, layer from when you stamped. That's all you need to find to make sure it's the right way up. Okay, so then I'm just going to tilt that again slightly. And then the final... The coloured piece. Now let me just show you this a little. See that a bit closer. There we go. Sorry, I always tend to start moving off, moving down the table. I don't know why I do that. I need to stick my mat down, I think, and then I'll know exactly where I'm supposed to be. So now I'm just placing that just on top and then I have a sentiment. These are the Tim Holt sentiments. These were available and I'm just going to find the right one. So let's have a look. Uh, embrace your journey. Oh yeah, and that can go just down the side. So there we go. Right, let's have a look. Hi everyone, I hope you're doing, I love everything wonky. Don't know me neither, Sheena, me neither. So there we go. That's the project. So you can see different multiple layers of the stamp. So you stamp everything at once and then you just build up the color. Really, really simple. Right, so let's move on to our next project. I will take photos and they'll be on there. So if you want to have a look at them after, that will be fine. I've just got to have a quick tidy up on my table. I'm so messy. You don't realise, do you? How messy you get. Okay, so that goes over there. That goes there. That goes there. Right, journaling. Well, an art journal. Art journals are totally different to your usual journaling. So you're not exactly um, just doing um, writing things. You're just going to do techniques. Hello, Julie. Oh, I'm so glad you like that, Diane. Thank you. I'm covered in embossing powder. Never mind. Just like to appreciate my wallpapering. Isn't it lush? I love it. Um, so art journaling is very different than traditional journaling because you're not actually writing a diary or keeping track of anything what it is is multiple different pages of different techniques and different ideas um it's a great resource that you can go back to and look at and think oh i like that that was a great idea so all you need to do first things first is get yourself a journaling book my craft room's an eternal mess <gasps> tell me about it tell me about it i know so i've got a few stampy beads that i am using i'm using the thistle oh carly come on put a bit of paper behind it it's never a bit of paper when you need it is there never so i've got the thistle this is by stamps by me doodle stamps from tonic um, I've just got some other random stamps as well. I've got feathers by Stamps by Me with these beautiful circles and stuff. So these are just the stamps that I'm sort of looking at using, to be honest. So I'll just pop them over there. Um, also, what I've got is a collection of papers. So um, I've got some book papers. Just some old book papers ripped out of some books I was going to send to a charity shop. Obviously, charity shops are all shut at the moment. So I've decided to use them. Also, I've been making wall art everywhere in the whole house. It's brilliant, isn't it? Basically, all these things that I've wanted to do in the house, I'm finally getting them done. So I'm looking at this as the positive rather than, you know, the bad side that it really is. So other papers I have are... This is uh, Green Pieces. This is from Crafter's Companion. 
I've got a little bit of scrap berry in here. These are just little odds and ends that I've found. This is Graphic 45. I've got a piece there. Um, and then I've just cut some bits out from a random piece of paper. I think it was by, um, is it Mayor Art? And basically it's just like words. So I've got like be helpful, reach. Um, I cut out some uh, detail as well. So I've got like a little key. You could stamp these if you want or you could just cut them out from papers. Um, again, I've got a beautiful cup of tea in the corner there. That's just like an edge that I've taken out. And then I've got another cup and keep the faith. Okay, so now they're all my bits that I'm gonna pop onto my art journal. So you can buy these really, really cheap. Um, they're just journals basically. So they're just really cheap um, sort of uh, uh, craft card on the outside. You've got the spines. You could actually make these yourself. The thing that I do love is they're the dots on the inside. So they're really easy if you wanna do doodling and stuff. Absolutely beautiful. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into an art journal. So because I'm doing painting and stuff on the layers of the pages, I suggest that you glue two together to begin with, just to give it a bit of thickness. And also your um, paints, because we're using acrylics and stuff, won't go through. So this is my base, first of all. So I've done some green, a little bit blue on there, a little bit white, just with acrylic paints over the top. Really, really simple. And this is gonna be our base for our first page of our art journal. So if you're thinking, I quite fancy having a go at this, every week I'm gonna dedicate, I mean, today is Monday. So if we dedicate Monday to art journal pages, I'll do two projects. I'll do a card project or a um, oh, I have a mindful one sent. Oh, Amazon gifted to me. Oh, lucky you, Sheena. You lucky girl. Um, so I expect you will join in our um, art journal um, adventures then. Okay. So like I said before, I've just done a bit of acrylic painting. I've stuck two pages together to give it a bit of thickness. Acrylic paint, multiple layer. But what we're going to do is we are really going to go to town on this page, okay? So I'm going to turn you around so you can see exactly what I'm doing on here. Let's have a look. There we go. Can you see? Perfect. So if I keep this here, hopefully we should be okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start incorporating some more layers and stuff. So I'm going to first of all... I'm just gonna take my Eureka, take that stamp off. I really should bring things to clean things. I'm so naughty for that. I never clean things off and then I end up with a big mess. Okay, so I'm gonna take my journal and I'm just gonna place it onto my stamping platform. Cause there's a few things that I wanna add in as sort of a predominant, first of all. So let's have a look at these stamps that I've chosen already. I'm going to go for this feather with this beautiful geometric shape. And I'm just going to place it down one side like so. So I'm going to pick that up onto my Eureka. Making sure that adheres lovely. And I'm just going to find some ink. So the ink that I'm going to be using on here is the um, Braid Sage. Oh, Bundled Sage. Um, I've got a couple of those. I'm going to use as well the mowed lawn. Maybe a little bit of fossilised amber in here as well. And peacock feather because I do love that peacock feather colour. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, first things first, I've got some watercolour. Uh, this is waterproof ink pad. This is by uh, Pinflare. And I'm just going to add that to my stamp and then I'm just going to pull this over. If you've never thought about art journaling, it's a great way because it builds really quickly. And also it's just something a bit different, isn't it? So now I'm coming straight down onto this, giving it a good old push down. There we go. Perfect. So I'm just going to pop this to a side for a second, give myself some space because I want to start doing some different ink layers on here now. So let's have a look for my green pieces. There we go. Right. So I'm going to pick up first things first that beautiful bundled sage. Now I'm also going to start adding in 
some of my stencils. So the first stencil I'm going to be using, let me go right to the bottom. Because all my Why is it all your favourite ones are always at the bottom? I don't get that. Um, this is almost like a, a vintage sort of a wage sheet, if you like. I'm going to go over the top of all of that imagery. And we're just going to... Don't worry about being perfect with it as well. You can just add little bitsy bobs of layers. See that over the top there? Very easy. I'm going to also take another one and I'm just going to pop it that side just like this and then a little bit more just at the bottom now keep that in the same position I'm going to pick up my different uh, dauber and go on to the mode lawn like this so then you get a different layer of technique again with the different layers of colour like so Right, so let's see where we are with this. Right, so now I'm going to pick up a little bit of, she says, amber. Like so. Now remember these are acrylics that I've put on here and now I'm overlaying it with ink. So just a little tad, just here and there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I love the way that you can have the white distress paint and then you can just pop your colour over the top as well. I'm just going to grab my fan brush, add a bit of flicking just on there, a little bit there, a little bit there, a bit up there. So I'll just heat set that quickly. Run. So I'm just going to pull and chase it with the heat tool. so far so good so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my um, my mucky mat shall we say because it is a mucky mat let's move all these things out of the way um, here we go and I'm gonna add a little bit of cadence mat on here she says I think I've is it dried up maybe oh here we go I'll give it a little we go I don't want too much just enough and we're going to use a brayer to pick this up with now um what did I do with my brayer honestly what is going on today so a tiny bit get it working and then we're just going to layer some more color over the top now this cadence that I'm using here is the um, vanilla yellow so these are matte style acrylic paints which are beautiful absolutely gorgeous I'm just going to lighten that area there as well add a bit more of a splodge there and there perfect okay 
Okay, move that out of the way. While that's drying, I'm just gonna leave that set for a second and I'm gonna go over to a piece of um, book paper. Like I said on my last uh, Facebook Live, always pre-read it. People don't pre-read them, then honestly, it's the worst because then you find that like it's got some rude words and stuff on. So all I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of that yellow, that fossilized amber, and I'm just going to do two circles, opposing circles. I'm gonna get some of that lawn and that's gonna go in the center and a little bit, oh dear, a little bit over here and a little bit up the top there. So I'm coming back to the peacock feather now. Look how beautiful that colour is. I love it. There we go. Then we are going to go over with a stencil. The stencil I'm using here is my script stencil. This is Stephanie Waitman's um, signature collection stencil. I'm going over all of them colours blending it together, see? A little bit more here, let's pick up that lawn. Over, over, like so, lovely. Then I'm gonna go back in with um, a wet fan brush over the top and just let that go over. And can you see what happens? is brilliant because it's not actually acid free. What happens when you add the water is you get a much different layers of uh, um, colouring, which I absolutely adore. Next, I've taken a stamp. Now, I don't even know this is by, let's have a look. Dot border, I don't know. Oh, this is by Great Impressions. There we go. So just a dotty border. And with this, I'm going to add, um, not a bundled sage. I need to make a bit, bit more. What about the evergreen? Evergreen bow. And I'm just going to go over. There we go. Now, don't worry, because this is not going to be a whole page or anything. This is basically um, some of the layers that we are going to add onto this. So, again, I've just got that green. I've not actually put any more colour on. Like so. So, I'm just going to make sure this is dry now on my page where we've just added acrylic paint and I'm just going to make sure my book paper is dry up too. Right, okay, so now I'm just going to rip and as long as you rip both edges, you will get this beautiful effect. And then I'm just going to rip that edge. So you always rip towards you to get that finish. So that goes slightly offset there. And then I'm just looking at a bit for the bottom. Which will be like this. And then I just need bits. So I'm just going to pop that one there. Let's have a look. I don't like that edge. Take that off. Maybe we'll have that a bit offset. Now I really like this piece here. I love the way I've got the dots. All of them multiple layers. And then that will go over there. So let's glue this down remember to always cut your excess off after 
I'm using book binding glue because it just makes sense because it's so much easier. You don't get any bubbles, you don't get um, any, uh, even if you get glue on your page, it dries perfectly, so which just makes it so much easier. So I'm just adding that bit over there. This was here. If you tend to lose your way, what I always do is sometimes I take photos of my layouts before I glue it down because it can happen. You change your mind. I do it all the time. I have something in my head that I think that I'm doing and then it comes to it and it completely changes. Sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad. So if you are a bit like that, then maybe it's a good idea to take a photo before you start. This one will go over, connecting them three layers. So let's just let that stick down a second. Perfect. And then I'm just going to start looking at some of these bits that I've got to add on. So this one's going to go at the bottom. So all I'm going to do, I'm not actually adding any more ink to this. This is just the green. I'm just going to pull some of that colour over the top. So it just... This is how you can get everything to match as well, because then if you've got the colour tones that you've been using, you don't need to go anywhere else for it, do you? So there we go. So then this will come here. I've got that lock, but I've got another cup, and I think that cup should go up there, because then it will be a posing, which will be much, much nicer. So I'm going to start sticking some of this down now. I'm going to use foam pads, especially on this corner piece here. Just to lift that away from the page. So I hope you will come on my journey with my art book, uh, with my art journal, and you will feel inspired to do one maybe. And then we can do it together every week. If we do it on a Monday, that will be wonderful. So then I've got this beautiful little lock. Now the lock, I'm just going to sit, mm. Mm. see this is what happens, I've changed my mind, see because that's white, that's white, so I think we're just going to have to offset that there, perfect. So I've got a few little um, sentiments, I'm just going to give them a little rip here and there, I don't want them too perfect, and then I'm just going to find... Ah, there's one. Basically, just any little bits where you can tuck it in. Just try and tuck it in. There we go. Sentiment, be helpful. It's one of my favourite things, to be as helpful as I can. Always be helpful. Because one day you will need help too. And if you're not helpful, no one's going to want to help you. That's what I teach my children. So I'm just adding top piece, keep faith, big smile. Where would you like to go, big smile? Yes, that will be beautiful. So if you could get yourself maybe a little journal and we can start our journey together. So now I'm just taking a few of these little scraps I'm just going to tie that cup in with all of that. There we go. Let's have a look. No, no, I'm liking it. Right. So now let's turn it over. Grab your scissors and cut your excess off from the back. The reason why we do this is because it slightly moves forward. If you cut it from the front, it's never quite perfect. So just cut that from the back, clear up all those edges. There we go. Lovely. Right. So, final piece, I'm just going to add a little bit of some random stamping over the top as well. So this is just a tiny little script stamp. I've just basically grabs a little acrylic block it's not even a true full-size one 
and I'm going to take that um, mode lawn. I'm really into these sort of spring colours at the moment, absolutely beautiful. And this is going to go here. So basically every single page is going to be like a little collage, if you like. There we go. And then see here, I'm just going to tie some of that colour in. There we go. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. So, there we go, friends. Hiya. Another darn art journal before. That's fabulous. Right, let's make art journals. Every Monday, we're going to do a page in our art journal. So, this is our first page that we have created today. So, we've got multiple layers. I've used papers, I've used acrylic paint, um, I've used multiple different stamps and different techniques and layers. So, maybe for next week, you need to get yourself a journal book, okay? You need some decorative papers. I would tend to say, uh, let's go florals next week, okay? I'd say florals, we're gonna need pink um, inks. We're also gonna need a water spray and some acrylic paints. So if you've got that, please join me next Monday and we will do the next page. So if we do a page a week, before you know it, your whole book will be full. So there we go, that's the first page of our art journal. I hope you like that. Okay, so the two projects we've created today, uh, the first one was the layer stamping and embossing with the beautiful layered ink. And then of course, the art journal. Okay, so please join me. I'll be doing more projects on Wednesday and Friday at 1pm. But if you want to get art journaling, let's do this. Let's start this. Monday is Art Journal Club. So please feel free to join me and we will create amazing projects. So you will see some more um, close-up pictures of these. I will post them later. But let's go on our journey. Let's do art journaling. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great week i'll be here wednesday at one to do i don't know something else by then if you've got any ideas or there's some techniques that you'd like to see and you don't feel confident with them just drop me a message and maybe i can try and incorporate them into the facebook live um look forward to seeing you on wednesday and don't forget it will be art journal club on monday at one so get your stuff together get your art stuff out Get me on Facebook and we can all craft together. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Be safe, friends, and I'll see you Wednesday.